welcome back to another video of electrostatics. So in the previous videos, we have talked about charges, we have also talked about the properties of charges as well as the methods of charging. So in this video, we'll be starting with a particular law that actually governs the whole of basics of electrostatics. And that law was given way back in the 1700s, in the late 1700s to be precise, it was given by Charles Coulomb and the law name was Coulomb's law. Okay, so the law was given in the year 1785 to be precise. It was given by Charles Coulomb. Now, when he stated the law, okay, after the formulation of the structure of the law, he saw that there was a strong connection of this particular law with the law of gravitation, which was given across a hundred years ago by Isaac Newton. Okay, so now I'll be stating both of the laws in mathematical formula terms and we'll also try to understand the similarities as well as some differences among the two laws. Okay, so when we talk about the law of gravitation, okay, that we have learned in the previous year, that is in class 11, we'll talk about gravitation and Coulomb's law comes in class 12. So you should basically be clear about this particular fact. So when we talk about gravitation and the law of gravitation, it states that whenever there are two bodies of masses, M1 and M2, let us take, and if they are separated by a center to center separation of R, then the force of gravitation acting between them is given by G M1 M2 by R squared. Okay, here M1 and M2 represents the masses of the body, the R represents the distance where G is known as the universal gravitational constant. So, it has a particular value that remains constant all throughout the universe. And this formula represents the force of gravitation. And mind it, the force of gravitation is always attractive. Now, when we talk about electrostatics and when you talk about the law of Coulomb, okay, so when you talk about the Coulomb's law as a whole, there you'll find that if we're having two charges, let me take the two charges to be Q1 and Q2, again separated by a distance R, then the force of electrostatics is given by KQ1 Q2 by R square, where Q1 and Q2 represents the charges of the two bodies and R represents the distance of separation. Here K is again a constant, this is known as electrostatic constant, it has also got a particular value. Now, we'll be talking about those values later on. We'll also be talking about the expression of K in a different form. But let us first analyze both of the formulas. So when you look at the formulas, you see both of the formulas are structurally same. Okay, it's completely same structurally. But there are also point of differences. Now, those point of differences are somewhat interesting and somewhat also important for you to understand. Now, when you talk about gravitation, gravitation is a force that is only attractive. It can never be repulsive in nature. Whereas, when you talk about electrostatic, the force can be attractive as well as repulsive. Now, why does that difference arise? Or else, you can also ask, why is gravitational force only attractive? Why can't it be repulsive? Or, in other way, you can also ask, why is electrostatic force showing two nature, both attractive and repulsive? So, there are different kind of questions that arise. Now, those doesn't form a basic of NWT syllabus, but it's an interesting point to know those kind of facts. Now, when we talk about electrostatics, electrostatics is governed by charges, static charges, and charges had got two kind of natures, right? A charge can either be positive or it can either be negative, right? But when we talk about the masses, when we talk about the masses of any body, masses can only be positive, it can never be negative, right? Now, when the charges show dual nature, so this is called two degrees of freedom for a particular charge, so when charges have the property of showing duality, hence the force because of this kind of charges will also have a dual nature, that is it can be both attractive as well as repulsive depending on the property of charge. If both of the charges are of like nature, which I mean to say if both of the charges are positive or if both of the charges are negative, then we can say that the force would be repulsive. But when both of the charges are opposite in nature, that means if one of the charges is positive and the other charge is negative, that is when you call them as unlike charges, that is when the force would be attractive in nature. So it depends on either the charges are positive or the charges are negative. 
But when you talk about masses, since masses has got only one property of being positive, hence the force can only show one kind of nature and that nature is attractive. It's not repulsive, right? Why is it not repulsive? That is again a part of different topic, which we'll be discussing someday later on. But right now you need to understand this particular set of difference. Now, people might ask, why is this not repulsive? Why is gravitation only attractive? So let's not keep it for a later topic. Let me give you some hint right, of, right as of now. So, the, one of the very important analogy creator of this particular topic that you need to understand is that People generally take this consideration that the role of charges are being played by masses, which actually is a case for till some extent. But actually the role of charges is not being played by masses. Okay, if you look at the proper analogy, then the role of the charges is actually being played by energy. When you talk about mechanics, the role of charges that the charge play electrostatics, the same role is being played by the term called energy, which you talk in gravitation. Okay, and mind it, energy can be positive as well as negative. So, energy is that character which shows both the positive and negative character and hence we can talk about symmetry there. Okay, so that's one of the very important points. Again, you can also talk about the fact like gravitation, this kind of force is actually mediated by spin. There are two different kinds of spin of particles. It's odd spin and even spin. So these kind of spins also regulate the force of attraction or repulsion. For gravitation, the spins are balanced in such a way that the forces are only attractive. Okay, now when you talk about the factor of distances, if you talk about distances in terms of gravitation, these distances are enormous. They're enormously big and the attractive force cannot be strong enough to make them touch each other physically, right? But when we talk about electrostatics, the force is quite stronger. In fact, it's very strong than gravitational force. Okay, it's 10 to the power 40 times stronger. And one of the matter of fact that you need to understand is the distances are not enormously big in this case. Because we are talking about subatomic particles, the distances are also of subatomic levels. And the forces are strong enough to let the charge physically touch each other when the forces are attractive. So these are some of the points that you need to understand so as to grab the interest in this particular topic.